at the time I'm posting this video here in the US it's the Super Bowl weekend. So in that spirit, let's dedicate this video to estimate the moment of inertia of a football. So a football can be reasonably approximated as a prolate spheroid, right? Like if I took a sphere of radius A and then I stretched out one of the axes out to, you know, B here, like I'm showing, then that would be an example of a prolate spheroid. And our football, as I'm showing in this picture here, is more or less hollow, right? All right, so what I've done in this picture here is I've blown up the outer section of our prolate spheroid, and we can see it's going to have some small thickness, which I'm going to call epsilon. All right, and this material is going to have some mass density, which I'm going to call rho. All right, and then we're going to get this moment of inertia about this Z axis here. So the way that we're going to calculate the moment of inertia of this prolate spheroid shell is we're going to use the superposition principle for moments of inertia. So in this picture here, here I have A, right? And A is a solid spheroid. And then surrounding A with some thickness epsilon is a shell which I'm calling B. A and B both have the same mass density rho, so when you put A plus B together, you just get a slightly larger spheroid. So by superposition, the moment of inertia, right, of this total spheroid A plus B, we can think of as, you know, having some contribution from the inner spheroid I sub A plus a contribution from the shell on the outside I sub B. Right, so what we're after is just the B part, right? We just want the moment of inertia of this shell. That's our football. So we have I sub B is equal to I sub A plus B minus I sub A. Okay, fairly straightforward. But what's really nice about this is the moment of inertia of solid spheroids are actually fairly simple. So I prolate spheroid in terms of mass density is equal to 8 over 15 times pi times rho times a to the fourth times b, where capital A is this general parameter for the minor axis of your spheroid and capital B is your major axis. Notice how similar this is to the moment of inertia of a sphere, right? I sub sphere would be equal to 8 fifteenths pi rho times r to the fifth, where r is the radius of that sphere, right? Because what I can imagine is I have some sphere with, you know, some radius a, and then what I do is I stretch the sphere out in one direction, just like this, so that this axis still here is a, but now I have one major axis b, right? So this is some transformation that I'm doing to get from this sphere to this spheroid, right? And effectively, you can show that the moments of inertia of the sphere and the spheroid are going to be linked by, you know, some factor like B over A. If anyone wants me to walk through that calculation explicitly, let me know in the comments and I can dedicate a video to that. All right, but anyways, let's continue this problem using this formula we've got here. So we have I sub B is equal to I sub A plus B, oh, that's the big spheroid. So we have eight over 15 times pi times rho times what's capital A here? It's gonna be A plus epsilon. So A plus epsilon to the fourth times B, right? Capital B is going to be this lowercase b plus epsilon, b plus epsilon, okay? And we have minus I sub A, which is gonna be eight over 15 times pi times rho. And now we have just lowercase a to the fourth, lowercase b, right? Cause that's just the inner parts here. And let me go ahead and pull out our constants out of this to make life easier. Now we can actually simplify what's in the brackets here a lot because, because we know that this epsilon, this thickness parameter here, epsilon is going to be significantly less than a or b right we have a very thin football right so if we take what i've underlined in red here and we expand that out right we have something to the fourth power here so it's kind of tedious that's why i'm not doing it explicitly in this video we're going to get lots of terms right and we're going to get terms, some with no epsilons on them, some with epsilons to the first power on them, like these guys, and we're going to have higher order terms, terms with powers of epsilon greater than or equal to two. But 
when you make this approximation that epsilon is significantly less than a or b or that epsilon is small then all of these higher order terms we can say go to zero all right so that's what i'm doing here i'm making a first order approximation because we have a very thin shell epsilon is small right but if we do that if we do that these terms these a to the fourth b terms cancel out with each other and we get a really nice expression here so i'm gonna have 8 over 15 times pi times rho look i can pull out an epsilon and i can pull out an a cubed and i'm gonna have times 4b plus a. Let me go ahead and box this expression here up. So at this point we have a really nice expression for the moment of inertia of a spheroid shell with some mass density rho, but what we really want to do is we really want to get rid of this rho parameter here, right? Because what I want to do is I just want to look up the mass of a football and be able to tell you what the moment of inertia is approximately. Let's not write everything in terms of mass density. Right, so let me go ahead and introduce that this spheroid is going to have some surface area I'll call capital S. So if this spheroid shell has some mass m, we can write out the mass density as m over s times epsilon, right? Taking the surface area times the little thickness epsilon is going to give us the total volume of our spheroid shell. And you take the mass over the volume of your object to get to mass density. All right, so we have that epsilons are going to cancel. Right, so now we're left with one last problem, which is that we don't know the surface area of a prolate spheroid. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, the surface area expression for a prolate spheroid is pretty icky. Definitely not going to be something that I'm deriving in this video. You definitely need integral calculus in order to get it. But if you're dying to know how to calculate the surface area of a prolate spheroid, I went ahead and attached a resource that gives a general walkthrough on calculating this surface area. Okay, but aside from the fact that this surface area expression is really, really gross, ultimately let's appreciate that we've simplified, you know, this top expression, which required a mass density and a thickness of the material in the football, to a much simpler equation that requires only the mass of your football along with the major and minor axes of your football. All right, and so what I've done here is I found a nice source, which I'll put the link to in the description below, and it contains some nice values that we can actually use in order to estimate our moment of inertia here. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in the middle on each of these values. I'm gonna take M to be approximately 410 grams. I'm going to take A to be about 8.4 centimeters, and I'm going to take B to be approximately 14.1 centimeters, right? And I've already gone through and plugged these values in, so you can either plug them in yourself or take my word for it. We're going to find that the moment of inertia of a football is going to be approximately 0 0.00202 kilograms meters squared. And there we go. Now, I was curious to see how effective our kind of prolate spheroid approximation of this football was to the actual moment of inertia of a real football. And I did manage to find one source, which I'm going to put in the description also, that referenced someone else measuring the moment of inertia of a football. And so I'll go ahead and write down that value for comparison. I measured was found to be 0 0.00194 kilograms meter squared right so the last kind of take-home message i want to leave because this is important when talking about like experimental physics also because in our case right we're kind of more limited by the resolution of our actual data here and coming up with this moment of inertia for a football than we are by the actual quality of our model aka how close is a prolate spheroid truly to a football it can become a little bit hairy to figure out if the model that you're proposing for some physical phenomenon, is that actually correct? Versus how limited are you actually by the quality of the data that you're getting? And in this case, I'd argue that we are very limited by the resolution of our data here. Because I probably could have cherry picked random values, you know, between each of these ranges in order to, you know, come up with a value that matched this 0 0.00194. Even though we know that this prolate spheroid is going to be slightly off from the shape of a real football. 
But anyways, I'm going to end this video here. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.